Ohayo gozaimasu. Kyo wa genki desu ka? Today we're going to be working on the 22WX and we're going to be installing the last piece for the power mod. So this is the Perrin Turbo Inlet for the BBWX 2022 Plus. Let's pull this thing out. We're going to get underneath and get this bad boy installed. And then we got dyno tuning coming next week. So let's get busy and let's get into it. So this is going to connect to the Perrin turbo intake that we installed a few weeks back or maybe a month ago now. If you guys haven't seen that, I'll have a video down below. But this is a full um, turbo inlet. It's going to allow the airflow to be smooth and flow basically right into the turbo. You've got this nice inlet so it kind of um, tapers down to smooth. What's cool with the turbo inlet guys is there's no tuning required. It's a direct plug and play for an extra 10 to 15 horsepower on the top end and 5 to 10 pound feet of torque down on the bottom end and if you want to get a pro tune or do a custom tune you could definitely pick up more but right out of the box you guys don't have to do nothing just bolt it up and enjoy those turbo noises guys because it sounds awesome we're going to be going to um, what is it called pacific import auto on the 12th so that's next week just in a few days so i've got dyno tuning scheduled with them they're going to do a pro dyno tune on my car and I'm hoping to make 350 wheel. We're going to be running on 92 octane pump gas. And I'll film that whole process. I've talked to them a couple times over the phone. Kind of share the ProTune uh, numbers and stuff with their dyno runs and pulls. So we've got good instructions. So it's got everything in here. It tells us kind of what to do. I've already got the skid plate pulled off. If you need to see how to do that, I've got that in other videos. We're also going to be putting the stock wall valve back on the car. Because I'm having some issues with uh, idle being that this is a mass airflow sensor car and when you're venting your boost when you're venting that air to atmosphere the mass airflow sensor is calculating for that air to be in the system so when you vent it you're basically losing air but you have all that fuel in the system so the car is running rich so for the protune we're going to go back to the oem blow off valve so this is the smaller side that's going to connect to the parent intake and then it kind of uh, widens out so you've got a little bit larger uh, air chamber in here for more air volume so you probably get an, a faster turbo response having that extra chamber to suck more air in and the connectors and everything really nice machined aluminum here that's going to tie back into the system so what's good about having the metal in, inside this is you don't have to worry about this thing collapsing so as a turbo starts to spool and this is getting basically like a, a negative vacuum as all that pressure is on the inside it's going to stay open and it's going to stay free flowing so we got the undercover off and the skid plate off and it's pretty cool i was unaware because when i looked at the turbo at uh the big northwest last year like the subaru booth display by subaru motorsports but this is a garrett Turbo, which is cool, and it's a uh, MG722 is the model number on there. That's going to make it a lot easier to get to the uh, blow off valve having that skid plate off. I should have taken that off the first time because now I can easily reach everything. So, there's a few things we're going to be removing. So, the turbo inlet's going to come off. We're also going to remove this entire aluminum um, housing that goes onto the turbo and replace it with the parent setup. I, mean, I would imagine with the way that these are kind of ribbed because this is designed to flex as the engine moves up and down, that probably causes turbulence. So having the pairing with the smooth all the way in, especially down in this part where it opens up and has all these different shapes, that probably messes with the airflow and the overall efficiency of the turbo. So let's start taking this stuff apart. Do your best to just 
use your fingers to plug the hole and get this connector in on the water lines. Okay, now that we've got our connector installed and we've got our hose clamps back on, you're going to have to move this hose clamp kind of uh, off so you can clock this coolant line because you don't want the coolant line right up near the manifold. You want to keep it away. So we're just going to rotate that over. Now your coolant line should look something like that. And everything's rotated out of the way. It's as far away from the exhaust manifold as it was before, pretty close. And now we can take this uh, inlet thing off. We're going to have to remove So my goal with the install today is to add additional horsepower, tunability, and then hopefully some extra like turbo noises, turbo induction, turbo flutter. So let's get into it. Let's see if this video pays off, if this part is worth it. So we do have the stock aluminum housing off. I wanted to cover this, but if you look at this small vacuum line that goes up towards the top of the engine, and you look at the outlet that we plugged from the turbo on the compressor housing, and this internal all three of them are interconnected so if i blow into here and if i plug this internal ho uh, hole basically what that means is the video that jeff showed me is this thing is bleeding boost out of your compressor housing back in through the system and that's bad for your turbo efficiency. So I talked to Jeff about the test that he's doing here and basically what he did is he charged the system up to 20 PSI and you can see how fast it bleeds off that boost. It's basically like having a boost leak in your system. So definitely not as efficient as having a sealed compressor housing. Just something to know. So definitely a big bonus with going with the parent turbo inlet. And one other thing I wanted to cover too on the water coolant that goes through there to heat this whole system up. Basically that's for really cold regions like Canada or Alaska where it gets really, really cold. That's to help keep ice crystals from forming um, basically right before the turbo where like your compressor wheel is because you wouldn't want ice crystals damaging um, your turbo. So we don't need that for where we live. So this whole thing it's just really inefficient. So I'm super excited. It looks like Perrin did all the research, all the development on this, and we get to have all the benefits. Take a peek on the inside. You can kind of see there's a, it's not really like the smoothest in there. 100% pure smooth and coming directly into here. So I think airflow efficiency, this will be better. One thing I want to do out here today in the garage is get this new Air Spencer Citrus Lime Squash filter installed so let's go ahead and toss that in the car real quick get rid of that old one this is the same air filter i used to have in my o2wx my wife loves it i even bought her one for her car if you guys want to pick yourself up one i will have a link in the description down below Whoa. A good look underneath here at the turbo. You guys can see the compressor wheel there, and then we have where the blow off valve connects up top. You're gonna want to transfer this o ring seal right here, just pull right up and out, put it right over to this side here. We're gonna to need to take this o ring adapter off and put it onto this little plug. Put a little bit of fresh silicone spray on both O-ring gaskets just to ensure that they're not getting torn when we're putting them into position. Make sure you guys stay till the end of the video. I'm gonna have tons of footage so you guys can hear how awesome this turbo inlet sounds. I'm gonna have footage from both the engine bay, in cabin, and outside the car. This thing, it's the best part for modding the car because all the cool noises and the sound that it makes makes the car so much more fun to drive. So 
So we've got the hose clamp all connected up here to the parent intake. So the smaller hose is the EVAP hose that just slides right on. I just rubbed a little bit of spit on it just to help it slip in and went on no problem. I've got the parent hose clamp here and then they supplied some Allen bolts in the box. I just decided to use my OEM hardware and it mounts on the outside versus slipping into the hole which I just I like the look of that so you guys can decide what you want to do with yours. And the thing I liked about the stock 10 mil bolts is they We'll hold the bracket on this side for this coolant hose and then this is the parent hose clamp here it's all tightened down and then this is your crank ventilation hose that's back in there with the adapter so it's not going to pop off so we're good to go yes yeah, so everything's looking good nice and strong up here everything's connected everything's tightened down uh, let's get up to the top we're on the last two pages of the instructions manual and we need to remove this bracket right here So once you kind of pull that out, we're looking at this here. So you got the pink hose on this end, you've got the yellow hose on this end. And basically what we're going to do is kind of cut a little section out of the middle here to install one of the adapters with some vacuum lines. Seems to work. So when you guys do your install, your bigger gates connector is going to go up here. This has got the T. So it's going to look something like that. I accidentally messed up. So when you guys cut yours, cut it dead center in the middle. And then what you want to do is kind of trim um, as you go to make sure that it's going to line up. And uh, what I would do is put this on kind of on the outside and kind of measure your hose that comes off of here to just make sure you got enough. That way it's going to seal on each way. And then I had to put a hose clamp on mine because I had to replace this and it was slightly longer. And then your smaller T connector so when you guys look at this T back here, you guys are probably wondering, well, why are we looping the brake booster into the front vacuum line up here? It's to account for installing that plug into the turbo because that boost pressure is no longer in the system, which can trigger a check engine light. So having the brake booster bleed back into it kind of equalizes that pressure and you're good to go. But it turned out really clean. I mean, you can see the T comes off right down here. It runs underneath the intake manifold comes out right here straight to the back so when you look under there at first glance it's not something you notice unless you're looking for it so she's running and before we button up the bottom end i wanted to check at this uh, coolant line that there was no leaks from anything that i disturbed and everything is looking good here so we can go ahead and put the underside back together well, let's give it some revs too see if it sounds any different Wow, it's actually way louder. Oh my God, the turbo flutter on that is freaking unreal. Um, Perrin, thank you so much for partnering with my channel on this. I'm super excited to have this new turbo inlet on there with the front mount intercooler. It's gonna be a really dynamic package. I will have a link in the description down below for the parent turbo inlet. If you guys want to get it for your car, make sure you use JDM right hand drive 10 and you guys can get 10% off your order. cell phone in the engine bay so you guys can kind of listen but you get a lot of those like whistling sounds that come out of the turbo
solid idle now. It drops perfectly to a stable idle where before it would bog down and then over rev and the aftermarket blow off valve is screwing with the ECU. But yeah, sounds awesome. Perrin makes two different turbo inlets for the 22WX, the one that will work with the Perrin intake and then they offer different a different size setup that will work with other manufacturers intakes as well. I just again want to say thank you to Perrin. I've had the turbo inlet on my car since like three months ago. I've had it before it was ever released to the market and I've been having a lot of fun enjoying the sounds it makes. So thank you so much to Perrin for trusting me and giving me a chance to create content for the channel to help launch this product. And we will be back with the next video which will be the Perrin oil air separator which I have installed. I still have to edit that one so I've got a lot of content done for this car, this video was shot, filmed, and edited like four months ago. We've done the STI brakes and all kinds of other stuff for the car. So to answer the question, is this part cool? Does it make additional horsepower? Was it worth the money? Does it make the, uh, the sounds I wanted? Yes, absolutely. It makes extra sounds, extra horsepower. And it's probably the best part I put on the car. I think it makes the car so much more fun to drive and it's well worth the money. So. I will have a link in the description down below to the turbo inlet from Perrin. Make sure you guys use my code JDM right hand drive 10 for 10% off. Leave me some comments down below. Let me know what you guys think of today's video as well as the inlet sounds that this thing makes. It's pretty freaking awesome. And subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't. Hit the thumbs up if you like this content and I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.